Hi there, folks. My name is Will. Today we're going to be talking about machine translation. Now, I'm sure you've all used a translator before to translate a word or a phrase or to try to communicate with someone. Maybe something like a word like this to that. However, machine translation does have some issues to it. For you students out there using translators, if you do this, best it results in confusion for the reader, me the teacher, or at worst it ends up with academic misconduct. A little more on what academic misconduct is later, but spoiler alert, it isn't good. First, let's look at some examples before we dive in. In 1977, US President Jimmy Carter traveled to Poland with a Russian interpreter. Now, this interpreter was not actually trained to translate Polish into English. He was capable of Russian into English and vice versa, but he was not so good about English into, Pol into Polish, and this resulted in some pretty embarrassing translation errors on Jimmy Carter's part, such as, I abandoned the United States to come here to Poland. Ooh, that's a bad one. He's meant to say, left the United States. Instead of saying, what are your desires for the future, he got translated to, what are your lusts for the future? Better luck next time, Jimmy. Another example comes from HSBC, when their slogan, assume nothing, got mistranslated to do nothing. The consequences of this is they had to spend tens of millions of dollars to rebrand their image. Another example involves the mistranslation of the video game Street Fighter 2, where a character says, if you cannot overcome the rising dragon punch, huh, you will not defeat me. Well, unfortunately, the translators didn't know what Rising Dragon, Shenlong in Japanese, translated to, so they just kept that in, causing a lot of confusion when, when the character said, if you cannot overcome Shenlong, you have no hopes of a victory. Causing a lot of confusion, like, who is Shenlong? When is this guy gonna show up? Do I have to fight this guy? Spoiler alert, Shenlong wasn't a person. Okay, so you may be thinking, who cares? That error was the fault of the translator, the, the human error, right? Well, if this was 1954, you might be right in that assumption. Okay, so let's back up here. Let's define machine translation and talk a little bit about its brief history. So in 1954, an IBM computer was able to translate dozens of Russian phrases into English. This excited the populace and the engineers and scientists involved, and they even said and claimed that in five years' time, there would be no need for human translators. All translations would be done by machines. Well, unfortunately for those scientists and engineers, when you look at stuff like this, it's 65 years later, and well, those machines just aren't cutting it. Sorry, machine translation. All right, so there's several problems with machine translation both in terms of using it to try to accurately and effectively communicate your ideas in another language, as well as using them for academic purposes. First, let's talk about meaning. According to two researchers, Sakir and Nagore, they found that there were four main issues with machine translation. Those are word, phrase, semantic, and syntax translation errors. Let's talk about each one individually and what they are. Word translation problems are defined as when uh, a word in one language has several meanings, but in another language may not be so easily translated, either because it doesn't have as many uses, or it just doesn't easily translate across. As an example in the English language, there is the word do. That is a word fairly unique to the English language. And while, sure, there are ways to translate do, there just isn't many other languages out there that have a word that does as much heavy lifting as the word do. Take, for example, the Nike slogan, just do it. How do you translate that into another language? I'm sure Nike has, but they've paid people lots of money to get that message across. Moving on, let's go on to the second issue. So the next issue is phrase translation. Phrase translation can be defined as translating a, a phrase or an idiom from one language to another. Now the problems here lie in the meaning of those phrases and idioms. I, for example, I can say, we can kill two birds with one stone, or that this guy's dumb as a doornail, 
or that it's raining cats or dogs, but that doesn't translate across into another language. Those are English idioms, and, they, and the other languages likely don't share the same common phrases, causing confusion for the reader or the, the listener. Hello, Shang Long. So another problem is with syntax. Now, syntax, for those of you that don't know, means sentence structure. It's the way that we construct our sentences. So for example, in English, we go subject, verb, object. That is the most basic sentence structure. However, another language might not follow that particular structure. Some languages go subject, object, verb. This applies to many, many different forms in the language, such as the way that you ask questions, the way that you state a condition, and so on. Trying to translate that across is a very hefty task for translation software. Because of these reasons dealing with sentence structure, with syntax, it can be very difficult for machine translation to get the right idea across. Just look at some of these signs right here. Look at this example. Or this example. That's some pretty bad translation right there, folks. The last of these issues is semantic translation issues. So semantics are when a word or a phrase is similar to another word or a phrase. Commonly, this can be pronouns, but it can also be other, other kinds and types of words that share similar meanings. This is where you get that translation issue with lusts and desires. For example, I can say that Amy goes to the store to buy some shoes. She couldn't find any that she liked. Now there's a lot in there, she couldn't find any that she liked, that's missing a lot of information where words like she and that and any are substitutes for Amy shoes and referring to the shoes that she want, that she would have liked. There's a lot of information missing from that sentence that is understandable given the other sentence, but the machine sometimes just doesn't understand what you're referring to, and mishaps can happen. More reason to avoid using machine translation to translate ideas for your academic writing. So the second major issue with using machine translation is language use. If you use machine translation to write your papers or convey your ideas, you're not actually using the language. You're not practicing using English. You're just using your native language to translate your ideas, and the translator does all the work. This can cause a headache for your reader who will find your writing to be odd, your ideas confusing, and your form inappropriate. Ultimately, this will result in a failure to communicate your ideas and not actually practice using the target language. In this case, English. Thirdly, translation is its own skill set with professionals who train to be translators for politicians and business people. And it's an entire skill set that needs to be learned. Take Carter's trip to Poland, for example. He had a professional interpreter that was trained in English and Russian, but not Polish. Even though the guy was fluent in Polish, he mistranslated the president's ideas, causing some minor and awkward embarrassment for the US president. And machines themselves can't articulate the nuances of your ideas, your meaning, or the language structures when trying to translate those ideas from one language to another. So be wary when you use machine translation to translate your ideas from your first language to your native language. So finally, we move on to the last and probably one of the most important reasons not to use machine translation. Machine translation can result in academic misconduct, that term we talked about earlier. Academic misconduct is when you knowingly do something to give you an unfair advantage or to cheat the system in order to get recognition for work that isn't entirely or even yours, which can be punishable to failing the paper, failing the course, or even more severe consequences. So overall, it's just best to avoid machine translation because of the, the punishment involved. So in contrast to Nike's slogan, just don't. Let's recap what we've learned today. Machine translation, while useful, comes with a number of setbacks. First, machine translation runs in issues when translating four key ideas about language, words, phrases, syntax, and semantics. Second is language use. When you use machine translation to translate uh, essays or your ideas from 
one language to another, you're not actually using the language you're supposed to be using to get your papers done. The language use isn't there. You're opting instead to use your mother language instead of the target language to write your essays and convey your ideas in the academic setting you need to. In other words, you're not actually practicing the English you need to be using in order to succeed at the higher levels. Third, translation is a difficult skill set that we're not actually trying to teach you here and is something that people professionally train in for business people and politicians and can be very difficult to do. Lastly, using machine translation can result in academic misconduct, which can end up with severe consequences, such as failing your paper, failing a course, or worse. Now that we've recapped, thank you all for watching this video today, and Matt will be telling you about some solutions on how to avoid machine translation and some techniques to improve your English writing and language use skills. Until next time, thank you all for watching.